Good morning, everybody. We're in Colossians chapter 2, page 1148 in the scriptures. Bear what Bible is that? It's the scriptures. Where do I get it? www.isr-messianic.org or grindstoneministries.com. I have an entire video on why I use this translation of the 13 different translations that I have. Why is this my EDC, my everyday carry Bible? So you can just put in the YouTube search bar, Fair Independent Bible, and you'll find why I use this Bible. Let's read Colossians chapter 2. We're going to talk about uh, the whole idea of the law was nailed to the cross today. This Colossians chapter 2. You know, that damn chicken hasn't made a single noise until I hit record, and now here comes this jerk walking out of the coop making a whole bunch of noise. Luckily for everybody here, I've got a Glock 19X on my hip, so if we got to address the situation, we can. I have heard over and over again, well, the law was nailed to the cross. You don't have to do the law anymore. Wrong. The law was not nailed to the cross, and we're going to see that with our own eyes today. It was not the law. It was nailed to the cross. It was religion. The doctrines and dogmas of men. <coughs> Run along, chicken. Colossians chapter 2. For I wish you to know what a great struggle I have for you and those in Laodicea, <coughs> and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. So I'm writing you a letter, even though I haven't seen you face to face yet forever in order that their hearts might be encouraged, being knit together in love. This is Shaul of Tarsus, again, the Apostle Paul, the 13th Apostle, writing to the Greek heathens, <laughs> actually, the Greco-Roman believers in Messiah at Colossae, the assembly there who believe in Yeshua as Hamashiach, who believe in Jesus as the Christ. So from Paul to them in order that their hearts might be encouraged. Now he's talking about La Laodicea, but he's using Laodicea, another assembly of believers, as a reflecting point back to the believers at Colossae. In order that their hearts might be encouraged, being knit together in love, and to all riches of the entire confirmation of understanding. The entire confirmation of understanding just so we're clear here this is a Bible and according to modern Christendom all you need to know in this Bible is in about about this much right here in the end see that that's it the, this first three quarters of the word don't worry about that that was all done away with you just need this part right here in the back start at Matthew and uh, you're good to go. Negative. Of course, here we have Shaul of Tarsus again, encouraging these new believers to all riches of the entire confirmation, the entire confirmation of understanding. You, <coughs> you know in the New Testament when it says to study the scriptures, all they had was the Old Testament, homie. These are, these are letters that were this is correspondence that was written from Paul to other people to other believers they were not considered scriptures in fact it says in Proverbs I give you good doctrine forsake ye not my Torah right so they had the Torah and they had the prophets that they studied ie the Old Testament so all of Christendom is founded on the Old Testament the entire confirmation of understanding to a true knowledge of the secret of Elohim and the Father and of Messiah. So what would that secret be? Where would we find that? In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The entire confirmation of understanding in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You know, I read the Bible, you know, parts of it, and it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, because it doesn't work to read just parts of it. I literally encourage people to start in Genesis chapter 1-1, in the beginning Elohim, and just start reading there, and read all the way to the end, Revelation 21. Just read straight through. 
like a book, like any other book on the face of the earth. Like any other movie, you don't start a movie an hour and 20 minutes in and think that you have an idea of what's going on in the movie. It doesn't work that way, right? <clears throat> and I say this so that no one deceives you with enticing words. For though I am absent in flesh, yet I am with you in spirit. I can't be there to tell you this face to face, but I, my heart is with you, my spirit is with you. Rejoicing to see your good order and steadfastness of your belief in Messiah. Therefore, as you accepted Messiah Yeshua, the Master, as you accepted Jesus Christ, walk in Him. What do you mean, walk in Him? Backed up by 1 Peter 2.21, For this you were called, that Messiah, having suffered for your sins, that you might walk in His steps. See, remember those little, what would Jesus do bracelets? Remember those? What would He do? Uh, he would flip tables over at your church for your coffee bar and your bookshop that's buying and selling. Well, or, or would he? He might not even go in there because church uh, is on Sunday and we are commanded to keep the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, which is on the Sabbath, which is not Sunday. Whole different conversation. But uh, we can read in all four Gospels that he observed the feasts, was always going up to Yerushalayim, to Jerusalem, for Sukkot, for Shavuot, for uh, Pesach, the Passover. Okay, so he observed the feasts. We know he was in the temple on the Sabbath, as was his custom from all four Gospels. So he kept the Sabbath, uh, went to the temple on the Sabbath. We know that he ate clean because he, was, he rebuked the Pharisees on that. I, you know, and I got one of y'all has been kind of a jerk <coughs> lately in the comments saying, well, Jesus said, you know, anything I eat is clean. No, that's not what he said. Do not even attempt to make a biblical argument if you can't quote the scriptures. What he said is it's not what defile, it's not what goes into a man's mouth that defiles him, but what comes out of it. And that entire chapter is about ritual hand washing. And so if you read the entire chapter, you would understand that it begins with a discussion on ritual hand washing and ends with a discussion on ritual hand washing. And what Yeshua is saying is, don't you understand how stomach acid works, bro? It'll be okay. Don't accuse me of breaking the Sabbath because I'm eating a handful of grains with my hands that I haven't washed ritually before I eat. That's the difference between the doctrines and dogmas of men, which we're discussing today, and the Father's perfect law and the way that he put your body together, fearfully and wonderfully made in his image. <laughs> so what would Jesus do? He'd observe the Sabbath, he'd observe the feasts, he'd eat clean. We know that he wore the Zitziot, Numbers 15, 37, tassels because the woman with the blood issue reaches out to him. Power goes out through Yeshua, through his tassels, which represent the command to remember and do all the commands, the laws and the right rulings of the Father. And this woman is healed instantly, that fast. So what would Jesus do? He would do those things. So what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to walk in Him. He would do all those things. Well, there's only two commands I gotta do. Bear love the Lord my God with all my heart, my soul, my might, and love my neighbor as myself. That's what it says in Matthew 22. On this hangs all that Torah and the prophets you're so proud of. That's right. Those are the two prime directives from Jesus, from Yeshua. By the way, there's no J in Hebrew, okay? So, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Yeshua of Nazareth was the man's name. Love the Lord your God with everything you got. Love your neighbor as yourself. Uh-huh. How do you do that? That's what the Torah is. Torah literally means instruction. You don't get to tell God how you're going to love him. Now you're putting your, if you do that, you put yourself above Elohim. Put yourself above God. Now who's God? If you're telling God what you're going to do, you've put yourself above him, which is literally breaking the first commandment. There is no Elohim but Elohim, the first of the Ten Commands. Okay? How do you love your neighbor as yourself? It's the other half of the Torah. Oh, the law was nailed to the cross. Okay, let's go to Exodus chapter 20. Can I murder you now? 
Certainly not. In fact, Yeshua says, I can't even call you an idiot. Because I'd murder you with my mouth. Wait a minute, I thought the law was done away with. Thou shalt not adulterate. Can I bang your wife now? No, no I can't. Wait a minute, I thought the law was done away with. Oh, can I steal now? No, I can't. You know why? Because we inherently understand the law has not been done away with. This has just been simply used as an excuse for hundreds of years by pastors, preachers, bishops with no testicles, no balls, who want to appeal to people who don't have the intestinal fortitude to take the personal responsibility out of gratitude and obedience to their Messiah and their Redeemer to walk as they've been called to walk. Back to verse 6. Therefore, as you accepted Messiah Yeshua, the Master, walk in Him. Having been rooted and built up in Him and established in the belief as you were taught, overflowing in it with thanksgiving. See to it that no one makes a prey of you through philosophy and empty deceit, probably from a pulpit on Sunday morning. See to it that no one makes a prey of you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary matters of the world, and not according to Messiah. Understand at this time that the Yehudim, the Jews, as these pockets of belief in Yeshua are coming about throughout the world, <coughs> these Jews are trying to tell these believers in Yeshua, yeah, uh, not only do you got to go to the temple on the Sabbath and hear the words of Moses, which is good, right? It says that in Acts chapter 19, one of the five prescriptions for new Gentile believers in Messiah. But also, you got to do the ritual hand washing and you got to do all this other Jewish nonsense. No, you don't. The Jewish nonsense is what Yeshua railed against with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, and the high priests. That's the issue that he had, was the Jewish man-made nonsense. Not the Father's perfect law, but the doctrines and dogmas of men. And that's what he is constantly rebuking when he rebukes the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So you need to have the mental fortitude and depth of understanding to separate Jewish traditions of men from the Father's perfect law. Okay, The Torah, the Father's perfect law, the instruction, and Jewish nonsense are two different things. Okay? Understand that. See to it that no one makes a prey of you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary matters of the world, and not according to Messiah. Because in him dwells all the completeness of Elohimness bodily. And you have been made complete in him, who is the head of all principality and authority. So by following Yeshua, you are above all of this nonsense. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision not made with hands, and the putting off of the body of sins of the flesh. What is sin? 1 John 3 verse 4, sin is lawlessness, and all who do sin do lawlessness. Which means in order to not sin, you have to do the law. What's the law? The Torah. Yeah, straight up. That's what your Bible says. So, you were circumcised, your heart was circumcised through belief in Yeshua uh, by putting off the body of sins of your lawlessness of the flesh by the circumcision of Messiah. Why is that brought up? Because the Jews had a tradition that in order to be saved, essentially, you had to be circumcised. It was the covenant of Abraham. And so they're telling these new Gentile believers in Messiah, hey, you got to be circumcised. The point Paul is making is you've been circumcised. Your heart has been circumcised by Yeshua. Simmer down, bro. Again, you don't have to do this Yehudi, this Jewish nonsense. Now, circumcision is a biblical thing. Different discussion, different video. Having been buried with him in immersion, baptism, in which you were also raised with him through belief in the working of Elohim, who raised him from the dead, who raised Yeshua from the dead. 
and belief, not just the Greek concept of logos. I say with my mouth that I understand with my mind that I believe that Yeshua is Messiah. The Hebrew way of belief is with the heart. The Hebrew way of learning is by doing, meaning that don't tell me what you think. Show me what you believe. Show me what you do. James talks about this in uh, James. You say you have belief. I will show you my belief by my works. Faith without works is dead. So you can run your mouth all day about what you believe, but if your works don't match up with what you say you believe, you're full of trash and I don't believe you. So, and you being dead in your trespasses, your sin, your lawlessness, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, outside of the covenant with the Father, He, Yeshua, has made alive together with Him, having forgiven you all trespasses. This is very important right here. Having blotted out that which was written by hand against us by the dogmas which stood against us. Took away the judgment of these people who were judging us by their dogmas. I get this all the time. Bear, you call yourself a Christian. First of all, when the hell did I call myself a Christian? I'm a follower of Messiah. I don't believe in Christendom because it's a bunch of man-made doctrines and dogmas of bullshizer that are extra biblical and have nothing to do with actually following Messiah. Bear, you call yourself a Christian and you're covered in tattoos and you drink whiskey and you blah blah blah. First of all, plank spec dude, get the plank out of your own eye before you go looking for the speck in mine. Second of all, I yeah, I am covered in tattoos. You know when I got them? When I played drums in satanic metal bands. And you know what? I don't do that anymore because I'm covered by the blood of Messiah. And yeah, I do have a glass of whiskey occasionally now and then, but I'm not a drunkard. What was Yeshua's first, first miracle? Water into wine. Simmer down, you teetotaling Baptist a-hole. Doctrines and dogmas of men. What was the accusations of men, the doctrines and dogmas of bullcrap, of judgment of people, you are, all that has been blotted out by the hand of Messiah. The dogma, dogmas which, would, which stood against us, verse 14, starting again, having blotted out that which was written by hand against us, by the dogmas which stood against us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the stake, nailed it to the cross. So what was nailed to the cross? Not the law. Nowhere in here does it say the law was nailed to the cross. It says your bullshit religion was nailed to the cross. That's what it says. Remember that. The next time some preacher, pastor, rabbi, Bishop gets up there on the little podium and starts preaching and dancing around. The law was nailed to the cross. No, it was not. And you're a false prophet. And there is a Torah for that. Take you outside the gate and stone you to death. Because that's what the Bible says. Getting back to Christianity is extra biblical. It is based upon what men say. Judaism is extra biblical. It is based upon what men say. None of it, none of it fully adheres to what the Bible says. And so my challenge to you is if you are a follower of Messiah, if you believe that Jesus is the Christ, why don't you do what he did? Not what your pastor said or your grandpa said or your, your buddy from men's group or your best friend or some self-help book that you read somewhere. No, what Messiah said to do. Why don't you do that? Because if you're not doing what Yeshua did, if you're not doing what he said to do, then you're not a follower of him. You're a follower of Pastor Todd at the local Episcopalian church, or whatever, or Bishop Ted, or Rabbi Jones, or whatever. You're following men, the doctrines and dogmas of men, which is exactly what Yeshua came to do away with. He destroyed it, nailed it to the cross, so that you could quit being dead in your trespasses of what? Of the law. So if 
Yeshua, if Jesus destroyed sin from the world, and sin is lawlessness, Jesus destroyed lawlessness. So what did he establish? Use that Greek logos brain of yours and go the inverse. If he destroyed lawlessness, what did he establish? The law. There you go. Verse 15. Having stripped the principalities and the authorities, he made a public display of them, having prevailed over them in it. Let no one therefore judge you in eating or in drinking or in respect of a festival over a new moon or a Sabbath. This is taken so much out of context and it, and it is preached to mean the exact opposite of what it means. <clears throat> Yeshua stripped the principalities and the authorities and made a public display of them having prevailed over them. Meaning these people who have judgment for you, their judgment, their doctrines and dogmas were nailed to the cross. Yeshua prevailed over them. And so therefore, if anybody has a word to say about you in the way that you eat, Leviticus 11, clean, or the way that you drink with thanksgiving and joy, or in respect of a festival, like Leviticus 23, a law forever in all your generations throughout all your dwellings, or new moons, or the Sabbath, the fourth command, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. If anybody judges you because you're doing these things, screw them. Because Yeshua has prevailed over that, stripped the principalities and the authorities, made a public display of them, and prevailed over them in that. So you do what he told you to do. The way that you eat, the way that you drink, the keeping of the festivals, new moons and Sabbaths, you are supposed to do those things. And I've heard it teach, taught and preached that see, we don't have to do that. We don't do that Jewish stuff because Yeshua prevailed over that. No, homie, that's not what Paul is saying here. What Paul is saying here is because Yeshua nailed these doctrines and dogmas to the stake when he was crucified, nobody gets to judge you when you keep the new moon, when you keep the Sabbath, when you keep the festivals, when you eat according to Levit Leviticus 11, when you do what Yeshua did, going all the way back to chapter 2, verse 2, the true knowledge of the secret of Elohim being knit together in love to all riches of the entire confirmation of understanding to a true knowledge of the secret of Elohim. Not a true knowledge of what the pastor said on Sunday morning for 42 minutes behind the pulpit. A true knowledge of the secret of Elohim and of the Father and of Messiah. Therefore let no one judge you in eating or drinking or in the respect of a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath which are a shadow of what is to come. Go read Revelation. Oh, you're a New Testament Christian. Okay, go read Revelation. A new heaven, a new earth, a new Jerusalem, and a new temple. Who's the priest at the temple? Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. What's he doing? What is he doing? Sacrifices and burnt offerings. When? At the feasts. With the observation of the Sabbath. What do you think he's sacrificing? You think he's sacrificing pigs? No, they're unclean. Touch not the unclean thing. I would guarantee you what he's sacrificing are bulls and rams because that's the prescription in the drum roll please Old Testament for the high priest. <coughs> A shadow of what is to come. We do these things now. We keep Leviticus 11 concerning eating and drinking. We keep Leviticus 23 in respect of a festival. We keep the Sabbath, Exodus chapter 20, as a shadow of what is to come when Yeshua, oh, the temple's in our heart and Jesus is the high priest. Yeah, it says that in uh, Hebrews. You're absolutely right. Until such a time as he comes back. And guess what? There will be a new temple and he will be high priest. And what do you think we're going to be doing? A shadow of what is to come. 
but the body of Messiah. Let no one deprive you of the prize, one who takes delight in false humility and worship of messengers, worship of angels, taking his stand on what he has not seen, puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head, to Yeshua, from whom all the body, nourished and knit together by the joints and ligaments, grows with the growth of Elohim. When was the last time you heard anybody mention Elohim in your church? I'm going to guess the answer is probably never. Because you're not following Elohim, you're following Pastor Todd from behind the pulpit, who's got a really nice message today on three ways we can do a better job of loving our neighbor as ourselves. And let's go ahead and put a bow on this because, you know, we got the big games coming up at noon today. If the worship team could go ahead and get up here and we could bring the music up a little bit, we're going to pass the plate one last time because Sister Agnes sprained her ankle and also we're trying to build a new $40 million facility so that we can have a wonderful children's program so that we can get more people in the door so that we can do more seeker-sensitive bullshit. Or you could follow the creator of the universe. I don't know why I don't feel a connection with God because you're not seeking him. You're seeking Pastor Todd on Sunday. A true knowledge of the secret of Elohim and of the Father and of the Messiah. Pastor Todd's bullcrap was nailed to the cross, bro. That's what was nailed to the cross. That's the point of Colossians 2. The doctrines and dogmas of men. The Yehudim, the Jews. The uh, Muslims. The Christians. All of your doctrinal garbage was nailed to the cross. That's what was nailed to the cross. If you are a follower of Messiah, you do what he did. Now what Todd said to do, not what your grandpa said to do, not what Uncle Billy said to do, or your best friend, or the guys from the men's group, or whatever. What did God say to do? What did Yeshua say to do? That's what you do. Because at the end of an age, Pastor Todd's not going to be standing there in judgment. Your grandpa's not going to be standing there judging you. You will be judged according to this word and how well you walked in this word, which is why 2.6 says, Therefore, as you accepted Messiah Yeshua, the Master, walk in Him. Walk in Him. That's who you walk after. You walk in Him. 20. If then you died with Messiah when you gave your life to him or did you just Greek logos spit that crap out of your mouth or did you mean it if then you died with Messiah from the elementary matters of the word of the world rather why as though living in the world do you subject yourself to dogmas oh if you've died to the word world if none of that matters to you, you follow Messiah now why do you act as if you don't follow Messiah and you subject yourself to this worldly bullcrap. I would submit half the answer is you don't know what the Bible says. So you can't help but be subjected to the worldly bullcrap. Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which are all to perish with use according to the commands and teachings of men. According to what? The commands and teachings of men. What was nailed to the cross? The commands and teachings of men. We know that Paul, Shaul of Tarsus, is unafraid to use the term Torah. In fact, in Romans and Galatians, he goes freaking nuts with it. You don't see the word Torah used one time in Colossians 2. You don't see the word law used one time in Colossians 2. So the next time one of y'all comes to me and says, Bear, well, that, all that was nailed to the cross. You had better get your Bible out and read what it says. What was nailed to the cross was religion. What was nailed to the cross was the commands and teachings of men, not the Father's law. And the reason the commands and teachings of men were nailed to the cross was to get them out of the way so that you can follow Yeshua and walk in him which is to keep the commands and teachings of Yah Father God these indeed have an appearance of wisdom these commands and teachings of men 
in self-imposed worship, humiliation, and heart, harsh treatment of the body of now of no value at all only for satisfaction of the flesh only to be puffed up and filled with uh, a lack of humility worldly pride at how well you played the game of Christendom I realize I've said this word twice already I'm gonna say it one more time in this video religion is bullshit you are not called to that if you believe in Messiah. All the way back to verse 2. In order that their hearts might be encouraged, being knit together in love, to all the riches of the entire confirmation of understanding, to a true knowledge of the secret of Elohim and of the Father and of Messiah, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say so that no one deceives you with enticing words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your belief in Messiah. Therefore, as you accepted Messiah, Yeshua, walk in Him, having been rooted and built up in Him, and established in the belief as you were taught, overflowing in it with thanksgiving. See to it that no one makes a prey of you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men according to the elementary matters of the world not according to Messiah you got two choices the traditions of men the elementary matters of matters of the world or Messiah so you can continue to let people lie to you and tell you that the law was nailed to the cross or you can seek the true knowledge and wisdom of Elohim and put your own face in your own Bible and read it for yourself and see that they're wrong and they're lying to you and your job is not to follow some man your job is to follow Messiah because there's a lot of men that are going to be weeping and gnashing their teeth at the end of an age when Yeshua returns. Matthew 7, 21. Master, Master, have I not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? And I shall say to them, says Yeshua, says Jesus the Christ, and I shall say to them, Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. Get away from me, you who work lawlessness. For I never knew you. Bless y'all. Shalom.